Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspire Hire podcast. I'm honored to be joined by Dr. Missy Albrecht. How are you? I'm doing awesome this morning. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. We've known each other for a while, but we haven't seen each other in person in a while. That's my fault. I know. I, I can attribute some of that too. Although I feel like I know you really well listening to your podcast. So, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, B, I'm going to butcher it. It's the dating one. The dating podcast, yes. which is one of my favorite things that I do every week. But I have to admit that it kind of takes focus off of my primary business, which is the personal training and strength and conditioning. And, and that's how we know each other, which is uh, possibly came through a referral of like, hey, Dave, you need to know Dr. Albrecht because um, she does this really cool niche in the industry and you work out of Denver Sports Recovery, but you also have a second location now too. Is that correct? Correct. Nurture uh, well, well Care Marketplace. Mm -hmm. And it's like yep. a collective a co-working space for manual therapists exclusively or what other kind of uh, businesses are there? It's everything. If you imagine just an empty school building the bottom is a cafe, retail, childcare, fitness, and then upstairs is PT, Cairo, doctor, art therapy, salon, one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen you at Denver Sports Recovery, and you do a very particular type of physical therapy. So uh, how did you choose the path and describe what your daily life looks like in your business? Yes, I love... Um, I have accepted that I've entered a world of sharing weird things with people because people don't think of their organs needing to move. So <laughs> visceral manipulation is the specialty that you're talking about. And I went through, I had a really big health journey uh, towards the end of college and right before I got into PT school, physical therapy school, um, chronic fatigue, bunch of internal health issues that led to some really bad back pain that was actually, there was a professor in my PT school who specialized in visceral manipulation. And, you know, we tried all the normal things to help me with my back pain. I was the test subject for every class. And he was like, this is not coming from your spine. And so he worked on my intestines and got rid of my back pain which just took this little student mind and just blew it out of the waters because I knew it wasn't something I dove in right as I graduated because there was just a lot of foundation stuff I needed to learn and practice. But for the last four years, I've really dove into it. And it's, it's definitely a focus in my practice, but really just a toolbox because our organs need to move as well as your shoulder joint and your hip flexor and everything else. Mm -hmm. I can totally relate to narrowing down our focus, but also being like a student of our passion. Like totally. throughout college, I always answered the professor's questions like, what are the benefits of fitness? Well, self-efficacy over here, I'm talking about confidence, I'm talking about mental health, even before I knew how deeply connected the mind-body connection and mental health are through nutrition and fitness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't just sit there and spit information at someone. It's such a big picture to really help them. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, <laughs> there's, there's so much I wanna ask, but let's just talk about like current events. Let's, let's talk about how your business has been operating. Um, you do mostly in person for your career, but then you had to pivot your business out of necessity. Tell me yes. how you did that and tell, tell us how your clients are still getting results through online, online coaching. Yeah. So I was blessed. Um, you know, physical therapy was still essential. So I was able to stay open. However, a large piece of my, the population that I work with are immune compromised. So they have some sort of autoimmune disease, so that population chose to stay home for the most part. And so I was actually working on this. Um, this is what I was working on right before we popped on a new, it's called an interactive organ diagram. And this woman did this beautiful organ artwork and you can click on different organs and dive deeper into the self-care path. Um, and it doesn't 
it doesn't replace the visceral manipulation because that is such a hands-on uh, type of treatment, but to be able to teach someone a breathing technique to improve their organ movement or a self massage using a ball, something like that has been really fun. So it's been, um, it was a project that I've been working on. So this time really helped me finish it up and I'm hoping to launch it actually next week. So congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And along the way, I saw a lot of videos that were very helpful in improving posture at your desk or um, educating people in your audience. I'm a part of your audience on uh, what, why it's important for the, the organs to be in the right place and how they can get out of it. And why, why is that so important? Why does that cause so many other things to go wrong in our lives? Yeah, it's, uh, sometimes it's a game of chicken or the egg. But, you know, for me, I was having a lot of food intolerances that created uh, scar tissue and hardening of my intestines that stopped them from moving well. And an organ in good health has to be able to move. And so that was creating restriction because the intestines sit right by the hip flexor and the pelvis. So it was creating this back pain for me. But then on the flip side, I will get people who throw out their back and there's so much inflammation in that area that it starts to infect the intestines. And so they're on this back journey and they're maybe like 90% better, but it's still not completely better. And they've also stopped having a bowel movement every day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, how is this? There's just a piece of the puzzle that's still missing. So when we look at organ movement, it's really easy to, you know, you hear someone complaining that they only have a bowel movement once a week um, to want to just work on the intestines, but everything is so connected. So I've had people who had a, um, a car accident where the seatbelt trauma traumatized the ligaments of their heart and their lung, but their symptoms are bowel related. So there's a piece of um, very detailed evaluation that has to happen to actually figure out where the tension is coming from. And you kind of look at it, and you probably get this in your work a lot with fascial system. So the big toe can cause pain in your shoulder. Yep. So the same thing goes with the organs. Um, and I love that you mentioned a lot of the posts from Instagram because that's one of my missions in life is just to increase help people increase their body awareness because I spend an hour with them maybe once a week, every couple of weeks. And it's really more important how you spend the other 23 hours of your day. No, 100%. I uh, adjusted my business. I had to pivot my business as, at, as well. And I have never sat at my desk more oh my gosh. <laughs> than, than right now. And of course that's going to change the way that our body functions. Mm -hmm. And you and I were discussing, Right now, we we're discussing hip flexors and how they're so close in location to the intestine. And we we're also talking about jujitsu athletes. So, if I'm in my desk chair and I'm in a hip flex position in defense in jujitsu, well, then I'm compounding uh, all the other <laughs> um, repetitive motion syndromes that develop in our body. Totally. Did you now, notice that difference? <laughs> I've, I've, combated that through in-home workouts and then staying, um, incorporating more yoga because as you were describing, it took you a long time to work on this project, but once you got more free time, it sped up and you were able to complete the project. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, when I took out in-person training, uh, except for three times a week, which we were talking about, I was able to add in yoga. I was able to add in more like calisthenics and bodyweight workouts, uh, that are very beneficial for the sport of jujitsu, but also for the health of my hip flexors. Totally. Yeah. That, I, I think I could put the patient we were talking about uh, that I saw yesterday in that category of just sitting more and training in, because I'm not super familiar with jujitsu, but having worked with a few of these clients learning, you're, you're almost in like a roly poly position for a long time. You are absolutely They're They're always encouraging us to keep our, the back of our head off the mat, which means that we're 
um, pec dominant, you know, the tightness in our pecs get there and then um, the curvature of our spine. So I'll get a rib that pops out in my mid thoracic as my most common injury is very painful. And I can't spar because I can't accept any pressure on my chest or on my, on my abdomen because it directly relates to what's contacting the mat. Yeah. We should double check your organ movement and make sure there's nothing deeper making that more vulnerable. Yep. The, the time that I saw you in person and, and you treated me, um, you asked me to report back on my next bowel movement. <laughs> exactly. It was the first time I've ever been to a PT and that was the request on my way out the door. And, yep. you know, everybody loves a good poop joke, but they're not necessarily bringing it up in day-to-day -day conversation of like, yep. how is your BM going? <laughs> we got to talk about it because it's, I have a picture of a squatty potty diagram and what it does in my office now because I find it helps open the conversation for people because they just start laughing like, mm -hmm. did you draw that? What is that? Um, but it's, I can't tell you how many athletes I've had throw out their back and they start to tell me, oh, I was actually constipated and tried to one rep max my deadlift in the same day. Mm -hmm. And you just, you can't brace as well. Yeah, you're in danger of losing it right there on the platform. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if that's the case. Uh, yeah. I had a client come to me for a consultation and he was a good buddy of mine. Uh, and he always told me that, Dave, I'm gonna go use the restroom before we do this deadlift test. All right, you do you, man, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then later on, I, I got a regular client. Uh, she's now in Dallas. We do Zoom, uh, Zoom workouts. And she would, she would text me at 8 a.m. And I would make the joke that that's my daily routine is my bowel movement at 8 a.m. And she's like, Dave, don't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> but we were always talking about digestive issues because she had Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to come up in the conversation in our daily business of what's your nutrition like? And then as part of nutrition, we're talking about the health of our digestive tract, which yeah. then leads us to, do you have a regular bowel movement? Yeah. And there's so many things that can play into it. Um, eating on the go, not giving yourself time in the morning. And that's, I think, been one of the silver linings through all of this is my patients. Well, there's, both, there's two sides, but the patients who travel a lot for work and that was cut off, their bowel movements improved significantly because they're not getting on a 5 a.m. flight and mm -hmm. running around and in a hotel. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about that lifestyle a little bit now that you bring it up. Uh, I could envision that a person like that who travels early would be drinking coffee too to get jump started. Mm -hmm. And they may even replace that morning meal with just coffee yep. because they're like in survival mode uh, in this mindset of like, go, 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 go. I got to make a flight. And me personally, coffee is inflammatory and it's actually one of the worst things that I can do for my body. I've recognized mm -hmm. that over time. So if somebody's having that regular routine and coffee known as known to be a diuretic, mm -hmm. known to make us constipated, what kind of advice would you give to that person? Well, I am a coffee lover. So <laughs> Um, I find that I have to do less caffeine for sure, but mm -hmm. you know, I try not to, I try to initially dive more into the routine piece of it versus coffee because it's such a big, um, we just have attachment issues with it, which I'm sure you know about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> associations of like, this is my habit and this is the result. Can you hear me, Missy? Dang, we froze. Okay, we'll wait for Missy to rejoin us here in a second.
uh, where we left off was you were talking about attachment to the routine. Yes. Okay. So let's expand on that because I was asking you a follow up question of like, uh, do you mean an association with the routine mm -hmm. or an attachment? Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so people, when I go to help them with their morning routine, as far as elimination, I try not to initially change the coffee piece because they may be attached to like, that's just what I do in the morning. I love my coffee. I love the taste. I love the smell. Um, I'm uncomfortable or stressed already. I don't want to change one more thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, and I bet you, you have some experience with this, but adding, rather than taking something away, adding something in to the habit. And so what I'll have them do is sit in a deep squat, a supported deep squat while they're sipping on their coffee, because I think a lot of the constipation sometimes can come from not having that moment where we sit and breathe in the morning. So whether it's uh, on a yoga block, a step, couch, something like that, having that moment um, really seems to help. Even if you have, like if you have to leave for the airport at 3 a.m., get up mm -hmm. 10 minutes earlier because it's pretty rare that you're going to have a bowel movement at the airport. Mm -hmm. Okay. For most people. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right. I, ca I can get behind that. Yeah. So if there was one video or one helpful tool that you've provided to your clients while they were sheltering in place and not seeing you in person, what was the most popular one or what was the most helpful for your clients? So we have dove just through the Oregon Institute that I study with, the Baral Institute, into a lot of the research with COVID and how the viruses have been affecting the organs. Mm -hmm. And people have been very open-minded to learn more about the organs and how a virus can then affect them and how something like visceral manipulation can not heal you, but help recover because um, I've had quite a few patients who've had COVID and being able to help them virtually with their breathing mechanics and, you know, this virus is helping or affecting so many different organs. And I love, my gorgeous ball is too far away, but I love the gorgeous ball, um, which is a self massage tool that teaching people how to roll on their lungs, um, even work on some of the heart ligaments mm -hmm. has been, people have been loving that. Yeah, of course you, you can't talk about breathing and a respiratory virus without talking about the diaphragm which yep. then sits on top of, on your digestive organs. So yep. uh, let's connect the top half of the thoracic and then the abdomen too through the diaphragm. Yes. So did you see the MRI breathing video that I posted? No, I don't think I did. Uh, during this time, I've really taken a big step back from spending time on social media. For yep. one, I'm creating something of my own on the 30 workouts in 30 days that's now turned into like a monthly membership program. Nice. Uh, so I've been diving in and pivoting my own business and thankfully not spending as much time on, on social media, but describe it for me and then tell us uh, what the benefits there or what the education is there. Yeah. I commend you for that. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. I know. So <laughs> you're going to be obsessed with this video though. Um, it's a MRI of someone breathing. And so what you can see is as the air goes into their lungs, the diaphragm, which sits on top of the liver and the stomach, right underneath the heart and the lungs, drops down, and that's what allows air to come in. And so you have this rhythmic, our breath is literally rhythmically uh, massaging our organs. So as the diaphragm drops down, it's pushing liver, intestines, kidneys, reproductive organs down but it's also lengthening a ligament between the heart and the diaphragm. And so it's just this beautiful, I could watch the video all day. It's okay. so cool. And I think just because again, when you're doing organ work, the organs are not something we can visually see. So when I'm helping someone with shoulder pain, it's easier to educate on because they can see their shoulder, they can touch it. 
And so having a visual like that, um, it, everyone's just mind is blown when they mm -hmm. look at that. Yeah. If you don't mind sharing that video with me, I'll put it in the show notes so yeah. people can watch it. Yes. It's awesome. And then uh, I've been adding in, like to your point, instead of removing a routine like coffee in the morning, I've been adding in a routine of breath work. Are you participating in a breath work routine or have you ever done so? Yes. I kind of play with different ones. Um, I find it really, this is why I have to go, I either have to have a personal trainer or someone to tell me what to do because my workouts end up just being playing with things. Um, but <laughs> Which is not a bad way to exercise. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> um, you don't necessarily reach a goal, but I learn a lot. Um, so with the breathing, the biggest goal for myself is expanding the diaphragm in all directions. So I think a lot of people focus the belly breathing, uh, but we need the side and the back to work as well. Mm -hmm. And remembering that I think with a lot of the belly breathing training, people stop using their chest mm -hmm. and we do, we need to expand in the chest front side and back. Mm -hmm. So trying to fill all of that. But one of my, favorite movements or exercises that I've been playing with lately is um, it's called the diaphragm vacuum from Jill Miller. And it's kind of hard to explain, but you, it's basically another way to stretch your diaphragm and your organs through an inhale, exhale, hold and stretch. I can send you that video too, but it's just, it's just an amazing, um, people have found it really nice as far as tuning into their diaphragm and it's helped them control their diaphragm as well a little more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, please share that video with us because the more education we can get around uh, diaphragmic breathing, the better. Um, yeah. As my theme goes through my fitness and nutrition journey is um, I choose breath work for self-regulation, mm -hmm. um, lowering my cortisol levels, um, getting in tune with my mind body connection. Uh, it's before my meditation practice. So, um, breath work for me is belly, chest, exhale, and 40 rhythmic breaths, and then hold on the exhale and the inhale. So, that's something that um, my men's coach teaches me, um, as well as this was really actually very helpful is when we're out of regulation or when we're stressed or when we're feeling anxious at all, uh, breathe in through the front side of. Uh, Breathe in through your back, out through your chest. So you're almost like visualizing this circular breath where you were talking I love about that. breathing through the sides, breathing through the back, as well as the belly and the chest. Yeah. So it's this big merry-go-round. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, especially with the visualization with it. I think that would, that definitely helps. Because mm -hmm. a lot of, um, especially the population that I work with, they almost had, this was probably the second most popular video that I shared during this time was just organ awareness because the people that I work with are so disassociated from their abdomen because it hurts or they hate the way that it looks. And so sitting and breathing and tuning into different parts of their body, um, that because I'll be working on them and they don't feel a thing that I'm touching because they've been so disconnected from it. That's fascinating that they're actually like going away from the sensitivity as opposed to being hypersensitive to touch in that area. Yeah. Yeah. It's really the brain, as you know, is a very interesting, really cool in-depth organ. That's the most complex thing that we've ever tried to research. That's for sure. Yep. Yep. So I reached out, uh, what, three or four weeks ago, and I said, Missy, let's connect. Let's actually record a podcast episode. And the reason why you came back into my mind is another dimension of your life and what you're passionate about. Um, I don't go out very much, which we've talked about. But when I do, I'll wear my mask to the park because I don't know these strangers and you could come into contact within six feet of each other. So I was feeling a little stressed and I actually grabbed my essential oils that bring me back down. Yes. And I sprinkled some of those that you can breathe in mm -hmm. uh, inside of my mask and I put it on and I'm like, immediately feel, felt better. 
And it reminded me to reach out to you because you're a big fan of essential oils. Oh, yes. And definitely through times like this. Mm -hmm. um, anything and everything that I can use in my daily routine to lower my stress levels as a business owner and a father. And um, thank God I'm not dating right now, or at least I wasn't until more recently. Yeah. Business owner, father, um, possible relationship on top of that. We could use all the help that we can get. Yes. And that's what I love about the oils is part of, and I think this kind of ties into some of the breathing stuff is even if your brain is somewhere else and you're cycling and you can't get out of it, using your breath or using an essential oil can take you from 10 to one in 10 breaths, mm -hmm. just very quickly. And what I love about the essential oils is, you know, we take that breath in and it reaches uh, the olfactory area of our brain and gets into the limbic system, which is where we process mood and emotion. So you can have that direct effect and just bring yourself down. And yeah, they're just so amazing. Plus the ones that support your rest, a healthy respiratory tract during these times. Mm -hmm. um, I've been spraying my mask as well. So I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, with the breath work, um, my coach is saying, if you're feeling out of alignment or if you're feeling that stress, the breath work is going to get you back to um, more like a mental homeostasis than a physical one as quickly as anything else. Mm -hmm. And it would be even better for us if we could add in every tool that we have, like an essential oil to self-regulate. And totally. the reason why is because we, people always say, reach out to a friend when you're feeling stressed. Well, our friends have lives too, and they're not always readily available for us. So what tools can we use being self-led and self-regulate um, to improve and decrease our stress? Yes, 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 yes. And so I, I think- Go ahead, please. Oh, I was just gonna say the, you know, I've, I'll recommend people have diffusers uh, next to their office or next to their computer while they're working. And it, you know, breaks the essential oil up into the air so you can breathe it in. But the fact that you can take a drop, uh, put it in the palm of your hand and cover your nose and just breathe in, mm -hmm. in that moment, it's just such an easy tool. And there's science behind it. I think a lot of people just think of, oh, essential oils just smell good. But you have to find the one that centers you. For me, um, frankincense is the mm -hmm. oil that just can put me in that moment, um, put me back into place in that moment. But some people hate the smell of that. So finding, I don't, what was your go-to oil at the park? Well, I prefer Breathe. Um, uh, I know that you're a fan of doTERRA, the brand. Is that right? Yep. And yep. I am as well. Like my sister and my mom were using it regularly. My mom's got a diffuser. And I always just felt more calm when I went over to my mom's house for family, uh, family holidays. And yeah. I was wondering why that was. Well, that's because she's got the breathe in, in the diffuser. But what I do know is that some you can breathe in, some you can ingest, and some are more like topical and um, surface on your skin. So the scientific research that goes in there, there's a safety component too. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And the, um, one of the reasons why breathe is so good to inhale is for like pre-workout, you can also do, uh, when you breathe it in, there's a species of eucalyptus in it that is um, very supportive to a healthy respiratory tract, fighting things like viruses and bacteria and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure that we're going to lose the attention of some people when we have this conversation because there's a lot of naysayers out there who are like, oh, it's just psychosomatic. Mm -hmm. And what's your professional opinion, uh, both in what you do physical therapy wise and also because you've seen results from it personally? Yeah. So, you know, it, even with the organ work that I do and the oils, it, you know, if part of it is more of a placebo and it's working that's fine, but I've seen the research and I've experienced it and to have a tool. So one of the reasons I got into the essential oils was because I kept having patients coming in with pain 
And then they also had organ issues because they were taking Tylenol or Advil on a regular basis to fight that pain. Mm -hmm. So I went on this mission looking for something natural to help them with that. And the essential oils help and they don't hinder the body. Mm -hmm. And quality is key. So, you know, if you go to Walmart, you might get an essential oil that's maybe more perfume based or synthetic. So that's why I love doTERRA because they have a very high um, purity and potency testing process, but getting the high quality oil on you, in you, breathing it in. And what's really cool is the, um, cause I work with a lot of medical doctors and a lot of the patients are, that we collaborate with are taking a lot of medications and supplements. And so you don't, I personally take them internally, but you don't necessarily want to keep adding more internal things. So to be able to have something topically and something that you can breathe in to add into the mix is just really awesome to have in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. And even if somebody, I can imagine that a patient comes to you and sees you in person and they have some doubt about the efficacy of essential oils. And if you explain it to them of like, I'm a manual physical therapist, I'm working with your organs, this little bit of an oil on my fingers will help you feel better mm -hmm. because they're coming to you with a literal pain point. They're going to be a little bit more bought in there and then they can walk away with, with the results. You're not actually like necessarily selling everybody who comes into your office. Cause that's not, that's not your yeah. role. Your role is to treat the patient. And if a topical cream like deep blue, another one of my favorites, uh, helps them with their low back pain or their visceral manual therapy, then I guarantee we're going to change people's mindsets that much faster. Yes. Yep. It's just another option, another tool in the toolbox. And um, you're right. It giving them that oil experience in the moment is I have a, a new mom that I've been working with. She has twins and the thought of adding one more thing into her routine is, like just not going to happen but i gave her a drop of um i don't know if you've tried this one called adaptive very stress relieving and grounding and i put a drop in the palm of her hand i was like just sit here take 10 deep breaths and she had the most amazing moment there and now she's in the routine of when she's stressed at home trying to manage being a mom and all that stuff she remembers the moment in the office and is like, this is worth doing 10 breaths mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Don't so. you dare take away that woman's coffee. No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Just adding the oil and not removing the coffee. Mm -hmm. and, and now that we've been talking a little bit longer, but we probably talked more during our one-on-one -on -one session when you did your manual therapy on my, on my abdomen, but uh, the word alignment is coming to mind and your personal mission of educating people on the movement of the organs would also lend you to choose a company like doTERRA that has their own mission and it aligns with you personally. So we're talking about research, we're talking about safety, and we're talking about um, harvesting the actual oils. And you wouldn't, um, I'm just gonna project onto you here, I'm just gonna <laughs> guess that you wouldn't choose a company that's doing that unethically. Oh, totally. And like speaking back on to what got me into essential oils, I started with the stuff at the grocery store because I didn't know. Um, so I tried a bunch of different companies and I realized when I started playing with them that I needed something that I believed in and that I knew wasn't adding just another synthetic thing into my patient's body. So that's what landed me on doTERRA. And you know, they have a really cool mission as far as giving back to the communities, making sure things are sustainably sourced. So if a certain tree is getting worn out, they stop distilling from it. And so diving into the company has been, I, sometimes I have to be careful because I love the oil stuff so much. I will go on tangents, um, but it's just, it's been a fun company to work with and um, very, collaborative with my mission with Invincible. 
Mm -hmm. Totally agree with that. And alignment is key for us as business owners and as professionals. But in a time of change and pivot in our business, it's so important for us as self-employed um, practitioners to have multiple streams of income as well. Yes. So if adaptive is working for your new mom and she can't come see you because um, uh, somebody who just recently had babies is immune compromised as well, mm -hmm. then there's another way that you can still serve your, your community and help them reach their goals. Maybe not in as timely of a manner, but combining videos they can do at home tools. Like what ball was it that you said? The gorgeous ball, gorgeous ball. So videos plus tools plus a product like essential oils uh, helps them when they can't come see you in person. Totally. And I, it makes me think of um, back when I was in California, seeing patients just right after I graduated and you kind of hit these plateaus with, plateaus with some patients because they're just in such a pain cycle in their brain. They've owned it. This is who they are. They're never, never getting rid of it. And I have found the oils to be a tool that can help break that cycle because we can't. And that's the thing that I learn every year that I'm a physical therapist even more is it's not just the information that I know, it's how you present it and the person sitting in front of you and figuring out, okay, this person is already fighting me and spitting off research of why essentials aren't going to work. That there's no, I don't need to share that with them. It's mm -hmm. totally fine. I need to figure out what is going to help that person. More collaborative than it is just uh, in my business, I use suggestive demands to get my clients to do um, what's best for them. Yeah. I recommend you do this sequence of exercises so that it'll get you to your goals. It's always up to you whether or not you do it. I love that. <laughs> I'm I suggesting that. that you do this exercise. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is suggestive. I should start using that because kind of like as we started the podcast and you started talking about organ movement and we were laughing because I am you know, I'll have an athlete come in who has a pain in their hip in the bottom of their squat. And they tell me that they had their appendix removed as a kid. And I start talking to, the, to them about the importance of getting that moving because they've been stretching for years and nothing has helped. And you can tell when someone is not in it, like, and it's fine if they're not ready to receive that information. I hope down the road they are, but having it's, it's just mentally figuring out how to support that person best and suggesting something like I suggest that we work on this area because it was operated on mm -hmm. um, and just being kind and loving on them if they aren't ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, something's coming to mind and this might be uh, the coach in me that doesn't always get the buy-in from every single athlete or client or, um, or consultation that I do. And it sounds like you're really focused on educating your clients and members and um, virtual work through education. Mm -hmm. Like educating our, our clients and our members is such a good thing because it helps them with the other 23 hours of the day. Definitely. Uh, what I've learned in my business is that I can only give two or three, maybe even four bits of instruction per exercise, per nutrition uh, um, recommendation. Otherwise, it's just too much information. So what I'm hearing you say in like this visualizing you manually working on somebody's abdomen or their hip flexor when they come see you, they came to see you for a reason because you're either referred to them or they got your information on your website or Instagram or wherever. So they already trust you a little bit. And I can visualize next time I come see you, like you're poking around, you're asking a bunch of questions. Oh, you had your abdomen removed. And then there's just this chance where you can do the work without necessarily educating them at the same time so that you're not asking them for their buy-in. Yes. yes. <laughs> you could, um, well, because if you, I'm sure you've had body work done. And so even, um, I'm thinking of a few patients right now that I'm not necessarily saying I'm working on their intestines, but the psoas is right in there. So mm -hmm. people, some people are used to having that work done. And so I just kind of added in a little. 
it's a hot spot for lifters, that's for sure, and athletes alike. Yes. So why I bring that up is because we're the professional and they come to us because we have a reputation or we have a product or we have a um, educational tool that they've already seen, listened to, okay, this person's going to solve my problem. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we don't necessarily need their permission from here on out. We just do our work, send them off if they are the, if they're the doubter or if they are the, the difficult client. Yes. I think it's a, I think it's a good way to energy exchange energy uh, and treat them in a way that they're not going to fight us on every, <laughs> every step of the way. Yeah. And I, I totally see what you're saying. And I think that was kind of the beauty of me sh stepping out of an insurance model clinic because I felt like you know, when you go see a physical therapist using your insurance, oftentimes it's twice a week for eight weeks. This is what we're going to do. Sometimes you get 15 minutes with the provider. Um, and I find when there's cash involved and like you already get that different level of commitment versus like, oh, my insurance is covering this. I have 90 visits a year. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't necessarily need to like buy into what you're doing. I'm just going to lay here and kind of do stuff. And that's not everybody, but I have mm -hmm. found making that shift in my business away from insurance has helped me at least, at least I know the people coming in to see me are going to be like 90% open to what I have to say. Even if they're like, I don't understand why you have to work on my kidney. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, what we're talking about here is the principle of investment. Yes. And when people like clients and patients have a little bit of skin in the game, most of the time it's financial, yep. uh, then they're going to invest more of their work that they mm -hmm. need to do, either that's homework or the participation when they're in session. Yes, definitely. And this, the same could be said for both of our business models. You pay rent at DSR and I'm sure you pay rent at Nurture as well. Yep. I paid rent at a studio when I first started my business with only one client. And I invested in myself and I was in, the, I was in the red the first month. And it inspired me to go out and find more clients because I knew that I could not sustain a six month contract working in the red every month just to pursue a, a hobby or a passion. Yeah. And so I worked harder on my side to become a better trainer so that I could get more clients. And here we are nine years later running an internationally successful online business. <laughs> So awesome. <laughs> I got super lucky early on and I had the right people come to me and say, can you help me? Yeah, but there's, there's a, a lot of you in that too. So that's pretty cool. Yep. I'm, I'm yeah. super blessed. And, and what's up next for you? So, you know, we're, I'm open at both locations and people are starting to come out, um, which is really cool. I, my whole vision for 2020 was to I joined this really cool mastermind group and they've been helping me prepare to hire someone. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to really support, I mean, it would be fun to bring someone else on in Invincible in my mission, but to be able to provide another um, slower paced one-on-one -on -one for an hour environment for another physical therapist to work in um, because PT is a big, uh, burnout career for a lot of people if you're trying to see 20 patients in a day. So working towards that and then this organ diagram launch. Um, and the mission with that is to help people who I have, because I have um, quite a few Instagram followers who are interactive and they want the work done, but they don't live in Denver, giving them a tool to start to do some of this self-care on their own. Um, I'm super excited about it. Mm, it sounds like it. Yeah. It sounds like it's a, a system that's built a lot like um, my success system over here at, at FitLife and in every area of my business as well. The way I do one thing is the way I do everything. Yes. And I was, I was coming across an opportunity here of raising some capital for marketing expenses here in the business. And um, my coach, the one I've been referring to, is like, Dave, I hear you you're coming across an opportunity to experience a lot of firsts in your life. 
in your professional life and your personal life too, because I've always been motivated by time freedom. And that's what this business model has created for me is this opportunity to work from anywhere, work one hour a day with clients and serve a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And the first, okay, well, I first talked to this lawyer, wasn't the right fit. My first opportunity to stand up for myself and say, you're not the right fit. I'm going to go find somebody else. My first time interviewing marketing professionals. Okay. Interview four, pick the best one. All right. Now I've got my first lead. They didn't buy. Now what? Okay. I got to go fix the step in the system where it's broken. And this is the, this is the opportunity for me to step into my first time experiencing business ownership as opposed to income producing. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Which is what you're referring to with bringing on another teammate. Yeah. Now you're now an umbrella and you have people producing income for you with you yep. on your mission. Yep. So it's being, um, th this business group has really helped me create a business versus a lifestyle because what I had built in the last like five or six years in Denver was more of a lifestyle where yes, I was doing what I wanted to do, but I was working a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to, to make that model and <laughs> were you doing the same thing? Is that why you're laughing? Well, I, I'm definitely laughing because alignment comes into our lives and as professionals in the same um, mind body space, uh, helping people, being a healer, being a helper, being a service provider. Uh, balance is a clever way of saying the word control. And I literally just got off of a call yep. and I heard that for the first time. And I'm like, you're absolutely correct. I was, I was working for the weekend. I was putting in the hours. I was an income producer and not a business owner yep. until I found a clever way to scale my business and uh, that lifestyle. So when I created my business, it was so that I could get out of my bartending job, which was a terrible lifestyle till 2 a.m. every night. And the business at Fit Life is a vehicle for me to live my ideal lifestyle. Yeah. Not the other way around. Yes, I love that. <laughs> but it's not something you, I mean, it sounds like you have a good business coach that's leading you through that. It's not something that, automatically pops in when you're like, I want to own my own business. Uh-huh. I've had bad business coaches. And yep. um, I think okay. that what it, <laughs> when it comes down to it is like, okay, my internship at DU taught me what not to do, how not to treat athletes. And so I went to the other opposite way of treating people with empathy and respect. And I'm a coach first. And then when I hired business, uh, business coaches, okay, well, I, I gained some perspective on how to scale my business and I also gained some mindset. But for a while there, I was just a little bit off track on what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was using too much of their input into my business and it wasn't coming across authentic to my clients. And I lost a lot of clients because of it. Mm -hmm. So what I just heard is I'm reading this book and I'm listening to it on Audible on my walks with my dog and when we as business owners take too much of the community input and not as just um, reflections on who we are and then make the determination ourselves what's best for us, taking too much community input actually takes us away from our purpose and our alignment. Totally. That's, I mean, you just described the last six years of my life. <laughs> and I think that we're definitely supposed to be partners in this journey. Um, I consider you a power partner, really aligned with my personal brand and my personal mission um, to serve people as best as I possibly can, um, mm -hmm. which is why we've stayed connected both on Instagram and um, through a podcast now. So mm -hmm. I would just want to say thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to send us off with a message or basically describe what your personal mission is before you take off? Yeah, so my personal mission is really just helping people move better from the outside in and inside out and just helping people expand their mindset around what movement is um, so that their body awareness can increase. And our bodies are pretty powerful things. So it's pretty cool when we pay attention and listen to them, what they can do. Mm -hmm. Very well said.
Yep. And thank you again, Dr. Albright. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.